Major consequences of climate change include habitat fragmentation, the movement of species geographic ranges, and the loss of species due to extinction. It is important to keep track of how patterns of animal distributions are shifting in order to protect species that are becoming endangered and to see if we can predict how species will continue to be affected in the future due to global change. However, many species, especially reptiles, can be difficult to monitor due to their elusive and cryptic lifestyles. Even herpetologists that know the tricks of the trade can have trouble observing species long term, and we don't exactly have time machines to look at how these species were doing in the past. One tool that ecologists have for monitoring difficult to study species is often overlooked and may surprise you. Parasites, especially those with multiple host life cycles like trematodes, can be excellent indicators of ecosystem health. Trematodes typically infect three hosts throughout their life cycle. The first larval stage infects common invertebrate species as first intermediate hosts, like aquatic snails. A searching stage is released from the snail into the water column in search of the second host. Once the trematode finds the second host, it forms a cyst. The trematode is transmitted to the final host, in this case a banded water snake, when it eats the second intermediate host fish. In the final host snake, the trematode grows into an adult, which produce eggs, which are released into the water column in search of a snail to begin the life cycle again. So all three of these hosts are necessary. If there are no banded water snakes in the ecosystem, then the parasite's life cycle cannot continue. But if we sample easy to find snails and find the parasite, then we can infer that there must be banded water snakes in the system without ever having to sample them directly. This only works when we have all of the pieces of the puzzle. If we know that a certain trematode infects freshwater snails, but we don't know what they infect as a final host, then they're not a useful bioindicator. One way that we can map out parasite life cycles is through dissection of donated museum specimens or roadkill. In the Sustainable Health Ecology Lab, we work with collaborators at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences Herpetology Collections to obtain snakes for our research. The herpetology collections are home to snakes from all over the world and supplement several graduate student projects. The collections also serve as a sort of time capsule. There are snakes here that were collected in the 40s, 50s, and so on. We can use these snakes of the past to see how parasite distributions have changed over time due to climate change. In our lab, we find parasites in these road-killed snakes, like this trematode from a banded water snake. We then use DNA sequencing to identify them to species. By including genetics in our IDs, we can connect these parasite adults to larvae of the same species and resolve some unknown life cycles. We can also identify parasites that could serve as potential bioindicators for rare host species. Trematodes can be used for more than just detecting presence of difficult to find species. We can use parasites to track movement of invasive species like Cipango paludina chinensis or Melanoides trapiculata. We can also confirm the presence of threatened or endangered species in ecosystems like diamondback terrapins or bog turtles. And we can observe host extinctions, make new trophic connections, and learn about overall ecosystem diversity. Thus, parasites can be ideal indicators of ecosystem health in the past, present, and future but only if we continue to map out parasite life cycles and include parasites in ecology.